Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessed Thanksgiving Day to all of you. Before we get started, just a reminder that any who choose to give an offering today, the offering we've decided to send it to the Wells uh, Care and Relief Committee. You can see some of the things they do on the back of your bulletin. That's a real fine charitable organization. The only extra overhead they have is sending us these bulletins for Thanksgiving every year. When I think of Thanksgiving, I, can't, I cannot get past any Thanksgiving days without thinking one of my classmates from college and seminary. Uh, he was sent to Malawi as soon as we graduated. And he was uh, never the best language student, but he did his best trying to learn Chichewa. And as he's learning it, he started wanting to really get preaching even before he was ready, but he could only say simple little phrases. Simple little phrases, but he was very energetic about it. And he got his congregation to say, always, they chanted this, Mulungu uh, ndi wambuino, or whatever. God is good. And then the others would say, Mwathi Sonse, all the time. And he'd get those to say it, and back and forth. And he'd be running, they'd be doing the wave. And now if you go to Malawi today, I'm told that all the churches do that. Not just ours, but all of them. And if you go on one of these Missio tourism trips, you know, with the high school girls to repaint that one shed that they paint every, every crew that comes in, or, and you get the orange shirts, it's, that's what it says on there. God is good all the time. And it says it in Chichewa. And it, if you get these mission uh, forms and the reports, they always put this on the bottom. And I'm not sure, but I think, I think my friend started all that. This is just an energetic, but this one really important Christian attribute. Gratitude for God's goodness and all the time. And the way that is so infectious and so contagious that it goes to everyone else. And that's really the, the point of today, isn't it? Uh, so we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll join in our opening hymn. <coughs>
Apostle John tells us in his first letter, if we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and impure. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and action. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. For the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and guide us so that we may be light in your holy will and so that we may walk forever in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you and by his love for his son he forgives you all your sins. Therefore as a called pastor of this church I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray. Lord of seed time and harvest, we thank you for the blessings you grant to the earth each season. We rejoice in the wonderful richness of the land and the astounding variety of food it produces to delight and satisfy us. We ask for one thing more, the willingness to share our blessings so that all the earth can rejoice in your generosity this we ask in the great name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our psalm for today is Psalm 100. It's a song of prayer that, that tells why we praise God. Two reasons, really. God is good. God is our God. We know that. God is God because he made us and because he made us his. We rejoice in those two facts. joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord a new song. Enter his courts with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord a new song. God's word from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 10 through 18. Then you will eat and you will be filled and you will praise the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Be very careful so that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and ordinances and his statutes that I am commanding you today. When you eat and are satisfied and you build nice houses and move into them and your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold increase and everything that you have prospers, 
Watch out so your heart does not become arrogant and forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt where you were slaves. Do not forget the Lord who led you in the great and terrifying wilderness where there were venomous snakes and scorpions, where the thirsty ground had no water, but the Lord made water come out of a flint rock for you. Do not forget the Lord who in the wilderness fed you manna, which your fathers had not known before, to humble you and to test you so that it would be good for you later on. You might say in your heart, my ability and the power of my hand have earned this wealth for me, but then you are to remember that the Lord your God is the one who gives you the ability to produce wealth, to confirm his covenant that he promised to your fathers with an oath, as he does to this day. This is God's word. <coughs> Epistle reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, the church at Philippi, the fourth chapter, verses 10 through 20. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord now that you have revived your concern for me once again. Actually, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I lack anything. In fact, I have learned to be content in any circumstances in which I find myself. I know what it is to live in humble circumstances. And I know what it is to have more than enough. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, while being full or hungry, while having plenty or not enough. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you did well by becoming partners with me in my affliction. You Philippians know that in the beginning of your experience with the gospel, when I left Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. Even while I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once for my needs. Not that I am seeking a gift, but I am seeking the fruit that adds to your account. I have been paid in full, and I have more than enough. I am fully supplied since I've received from Epaphroditus the things that came from you, a sweet-smelling fragrance, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God will fully supply your every need according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. the Lord, O oh my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name, alleluia. Praise, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, 
and forget not all his benefits. Alleluia. And our gospel lesson for this day is recorded for us in the 17th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 11 through 19. On another occasion, as Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing along the border between Samaria and Galilee. When he entered a certain village, ten lepers met him. Standing at a distance, they called out loudly, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they went away, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, thanking him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus responded, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give glory to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. This is the gospel of our Lord. <clears throat> mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The part of God's word for our consideration this thankful day is written for us in Psalm 34, the first eight verses. By David when he pretended to be insane in the presence of Abimelech who drove him away and David left. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be in my mouth. In the Lord my soul will boast. The humble will hear and rejoice. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. From all my terrors he delivered me. His people look to him and are radiant, and their faces will never blush. This poor man called, and the Lord heard. From all his distress, the Lord saved him. The angel of the Lord camps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is everyone who takes refuge in him. This is the word of God. Dear friends in Christ, the story is often told of the little boy off in the Midwest. At a time just like this when the rivers and lakes are kind of frozen but not all the way. And he went through the ice. Would have died, would have frozen to death, would have drowned, except there was a passerby, a brave man who ran down to the river, took off his coat, bust through the ice, and made his way out, rescued that little boy, carried him to the shore, wrapped him up in his own jacket, bundled him the best he could, and started running the mile or so back to town. Knew where the little boy lived, and pounds on the door, and hands him over to his mother, who takes him, and before shutting the door in the face of this half-frozen half dead, extremely worn out passerby who had rescued her son. She opens up a little more to say, where's his other mitten? <laughs> We're almost shocked sometimes by the ingratitude, by the lack of appreciation people show for certain things, right? I mean, we know to say thank you. We're polite people. We even teach our kids to say thank you. That's one of the first things we, t if somebody does something nice and and no one says, thank you. Wow, we think that is really rude and selfish and impolite and thoughtless, isn't it? But nowhere near as rude and impolite and selfish and thoughtless as forgetting to appreciate the goodness of our God. Here in Psalm 34, God's inspired writer David teaches us a little lesson on this, doesn't he? As he tells us, to be thankful, and he want, wants us to join with him in thanking the Lord, thanking the Lord for his goodness in all circumstances. 
It says, thank the Lord with me. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Look at all he does for you. You guys always pray, give us this day our daily bread. And he always does. Over and over, more than we could ever even imagine. I know with our country moving from more rural to urban living, it's sometimes hard to think those traditional Thanksgiving thoughts, right? Hardly any of us just got in from the fields after combining the harvest yesterday or, or getting our tractors in, the, getting the wagons in and filling up the silos. Hardly any of us did that this week. And maybe we do need to stop a little and reflect that, oh, yeah, 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 the grocery store, the, the market, that's not the starting point for our food. I mean, we intellectually know that, but we need to, to think this through. And, and it's not just the food. That, that's just a small fraction of this daily bread our Heavenly Father constantly, constantly is blessing us with and taking care of for us. I mean, if we'd sit and actually think about it, we'd have to be like that little kid out camping with his parents, and the sky is just, wow, so glorious. With all those stars out there, he's going to count them all. And he starts counting, one, two, three, and finally he has to give up, right? Man, I didn't know there were so many. Wouldn't we have to say that thing about the blessings of our God? I mean, living as, as, as members of our families, as, as citizens in this country, as people get to be members in this congregation and, and just think of the way God keeps on supplying all these wonderful things for us. Just constantly, how, how crazy is this that sometimes we get so caught up thinking he should deliver this particular blessing wrapped looking just like this in this particular box at this corner of my doorstep at this point in time on this day. We get so caught up in that we're missing out on just the semi loads of, of blessings he's constantly dumping off on our doorstep. Or the way we could actually have such a poor sense of judgment and value to think that you know, I could think of better things to bless me with than what God does, or, or I could come through in a different way or a better way than what God does. And, and, and that must tell us something about something inside of us too, right? He's right when he talks about that sinful nature inside of us, and that just makes it all the more amazing, all the more mind-boggling that he would just keep on pouring out his goodness and his blessings on us over and over and over again. I mean, I can't even think of... How crazy it is to just say that, oh, God gives me everything I need. Are you kidding me? I sometimes have to stand in front of my closet and decide which clothes I'm going to wear that day. And then I come out to the kitchen and have to pick from which of the boxes of cereal I'm going to have my breakfast. And I hear the people and what a hard time they have on Sunday trying to decide where should we go for lunch today. And just the fact that we could take that for granted... Uh, shows how much that our God overblesses us over abundantly. And even if we didn't have all those physical things, right? All those material things, even if I only had one box of Wheaties in the there's still that one great blessing that God gives us that just makes everything else just fall off the table in comparison. He gives us life with Him for right now and forever. In spite of this fact that we talked about this sinfulness inside of us and that he says point blank in his word that all sin and fall short of his glory, the credit necessary to be right with him and come into his presence and his kingdom and, and the wages of sin is death and, and still he gives us this life, this thing he thought of, this thing that he blessed us with, the thing that cost really a lot. This God so loved the world that he gave his son. The Son of God. God, just like God the Father, just like God the Holy Spirit, this God. And he gave a lot too. This Son of God who came to be one of us. The cost, he describes it in Philippians chapter 2 as this. Christ Jesus, though he was by nature God, emptied himself, taking the nature of a servant, born in human likeness. His appearance was like that of any other man. And he humbled himself and became obedient. Obedient to death, even death on a cross. Here's this son of God, God himself, and he comes to be one of us so he can live a life perfectly without ever being thankless, without ever demonstrating ingratitude, without ever wishing, you know, God should have done it this way instead of that way. 
No, God should, I know I, I kind of deserve some of these things, but he should do this. Never once ungrateful. Never once less than content. And for all those times that we are less than content, what did he do? Humbled himself to the point of taking that to the cross, right? Suffered death for us. That alone should be enough to have Thanksgiving service every single day of our life, right? To be constantly thankful for this God, for his goodness. It's David's reminder here in Psalm 34. Praise God. Praise God for his goodness. He says, this poor man called and the Lord heard. From all his distress, the Lord saved him. Whenever David needed God, there was God. When David went up to fight that nine foot something tall Goliath warrior, there was God. When David was running for his life, being pursued by armies, there was God. In intrigue, in assassination plots, in wars, in battles, there always was God. And David doesn't take it for granted. In fact, he calls us to join in with him in praising God for this. He praised God and he wanted others to do the same thing. He says, proclaim the greatness of the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Isn't that the attitude of people who actually recognize the true goodness of the true God? Taste and see that he's good. I've tasted it. I've heard his gospel good news. I've, I've tasted his sacraments. He's fed me. He's made me his own. He's made me able to know that. He's given me faith. And he makes that faith grow and, and get stronger and more outward looking and wanting other people to know that too and to join in the celebration with me. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us exalt his name forever. How thankful God wants us to be. How God makes us able to be this thankful and invite other people into this. Yeah, thank him for his goodness. But thank him for his goodness in all circumstances. Here's David, even though God had protected him time and time again, rescued him when you didn't think there was any way he could get out of this tough, all his enemies, all those battles, all those attempts against his life. And here he still is. And yet he's not saying this is still easy. He's on the run for his life. Here, he had, yeah, before had to hide out from armies. But now he's removed from his homeland. He's out of the land of promise, out of the land of Israel, and he mourns. His, the greatest thing that weighed down on him, he says, is that he couldn't get to church anymore. He couldn't be there at the house of the Lord with the other people of the Lord, joining around the word of the Lord. <clears throat> And in our way of thinking, it was going to get a whole lot worse. Because as we read this original heading for this psalm, it lets us in on some insight in where he is in his life, right? Here's another time where life had taken a turn for, we would say the worst. He's on the run. He's on the run because the other king wants to kill him. He even had to hide his family somewhere. And now on the run, his GPS must not have been functioning properly because where does he end up but the city called Gath? And that might not mean much to you, but that's, they used to call that Gath of Goliath. And they called Goliath, before he lost his head, they called him Goliath of Gath. You get an idea, right? They had the Hall of Fame for this huge warrior of the Philistines there. The body that they had on, it was a little shorter than the one that he went out into battle with originally. But this was the place where Goliath was from. Not probably the best place for the greatest Israeli war hero ever to hide out. And the people notice. And David notices that the people notice. And they take this message to the king. And now there's an uproar. And David, kind of quick on his feet, but also very scared, decides he's going to fake the lunatic card. He's going he's to play madman. His hair's all disheveled and his clothes are messed up. And he's letting the food and saliva just drip down his beard as he makes marks on people's doors and on the walls. And finally the king of gases, I don't need any more lunatics in my town, get rid of them, get them out of here, and sends them away. Not a high point in David's life, not sometime when he's really feeling good about himself, right? Or his situation, or his circumstances, but still he's feeling good about his God, this most desperate of times, what does he write? I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise will always be in my mouth. I guess he's not what you'd call a fair weather Christian. 
He's thanking God at the most stressful time in all his life. And how about us again? Yeah, if we think of it at the time, we'll, we'll throw God a quick thank you here and there. Oh, thanks for helping me through that. Or oh, God home safe, thanks God. Or, or, you know, whatever sickness. Or, oh, that ended up being benign. Thanks God on that one. And, and we'll throw him a quick bone here or there as long as there wasn't too much meat left on that bone, right? But what about when something's not exactly the way we want it to be? What if there aren't finances to cover the expenses? What if the, what if the, the health report comes back malignant instead of benign? What if, what if someone doesn't treat me the way I think that person should be treating me? And you notice how quickly we can go from seeing these truckloads of the Lord's blessings to only, only, only seeing that one thing wrong. Isn't it amazing? We could have 10,000 blessings in this one day and one situation that's not how we want it. And what's the situation that we think about the rest of the day? One of those good things, the many, many, many ones, or that one bad thing and get all focused in only on that negative thing. Maybe we could take a lesson from the little girl at, at Thanksgiving. Dad just gave the blessing, but it was right after he was complaining about work and complaining about his health and complaining about the food and complaining about the weather. And she was thinking as she was eating, she said, Daddy, um, did God hear you give the blessing and say thank you for everything? And he says, well, of course, of course God heard that. Uh, and Daddy, did he hear all your grumbling and complaining before? And the dad had to say, well, yeah, yeah, he heard that too. And the little girl had to ask him, so which one does he believe? Here, we could take a lesson from David, right? Here, in the worst situation of his life, he says, God, God is good. Rejoice in the Lord always. That letter to the Philippians, we just read from that. You know where Paul was when he wrote that? In the Roman prison. Not a nice one either. Or I think of Job. That one of the strongest statements that comes out from Job praising God is when everything has been taken from him that could possibly be taken from him and then some things have been inflicted upon him that we wouldn't have even known could be inflicted upon a person. And he says, should we accept good from God and not the troubles? Or Moses, when... He found out he was locked out from seeing the promised land. That was the biggest thing in his mind, at least at that point in time. That was the biggest thing he could think of. Locked out from that, what does he immediately say? I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Perfect are his works. All his ways are justice. He does no wrong. Ever give God thanks always in all circumstances, in times that are good and in times that don't seem so good. I don't know if you've heard of Matthew Henry. Every old pastor like me has a ha Matthew Henry commentary, like six volume thing. He got it from about 300 years ago, so famous Bible commentator. One night in London, he got mugged and robbed and wrote a little journal, journal entry. And we have that diary. We have, the, I mean, not we personally, but we can see it. Uh, his entry and it says that night, today I got beaten and robbed by thugs. Thank God. Thank God, number one, that this is the first time this has ever happened to me. I lived in this bad neighborhood for a long time, and this is the first time this has ever happened to me. Thank God, secondly, that even though they got my purse, and I, I guess men had purses back then and over there, but even though they got my purse, they did not get my life. Thirdly, thank God that even though they got all I had, I didn't have all that much. And fourthly, thank God that it was I who was being robbed, not doing the robbing. Thank God in all circumstances. Yeah, he says, we'll go through difficulties, we'll have pains. He, he promises it. But even in those situations, what can really harm us as God's children? Paul writes to the, the, the church at Rome. He says, so can anything, any powers, any governments, any principalities, any, any harm, any danger, any nakedness? He says, all these things, we're super conquerors, more than conquerors, because of the one who loved us. And, and then he goes on to say that, that I, I think that none of these sufferings could even begin to compare with the glory that God has revealed to us. We have one thing that makes everything else nothing in comparison. Salvation. Because Jesus gave himself up to pay for us. Now, we might not be able to understand all the things, how God works, and we might not understand why certain things that he allows that we think are, are harmful can actually benefit us any more than the little child in the doctor's office or some of us big kids in the doctor's office can't figure out how that painful little poke is going to actually do something beneficial for us. And yet our God, we can count on him. 
He's taking care of the biggest need. Give thanks to him all the time for the blessings that he pours out on you, the, the trials that he allows to come in our lives. Thank God all the time in all circumstances for his goodness. God is good all the time. Amen. And the peace of this God which surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Having heard the word of our God, we now have the opportunity to confess together the faith he's given us. This morning we use the first article of the Apostles' Creed in its meaning. Would you please stand? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God made me and every creature, and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, cattle, and all that I own, and all that I need to keep my body in life. He protects me from all harm and danger, and guards and delivers me from all evil. All this God does only because He is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Please be seated. sections will have a short introduction before it. We thank and praise you, gracious Lord, for the gifts of your word through which we have found peace, comfort, assurance, and eternal hope.
Lord, for the gifts of life and the abundance of our earthly possessions. <clears throat>
and soul, which are new to us each morning, we thank and praise you. We re reunite our hearts and voices in approaching your throne of grace also to sing. Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
on. Nobody did the coffee. All the time. <laughs> God is good all the time. Uh, we cannot thank him enough for his goodness to us. And we thank God for giving each other too. Uh, in addition to that, he just keeps on pouring out blessings upon us. We've got to have here all his blessings this morning. There's even a ton more stuff he gives us out in the Narthex. There's, there's meditation booklets that start this Sunday. If you're not up to date on your meditation booklets, they're on the right switch. There's some Advent devotion materials. Uh, Martin Luther College sent them to us so you can be prepared for Christmas with a little devotion for each day in December. There are calendars so you can see the church schedule. I know Come, for example, even on Wednesday night for soup supper at 6 in the service at 7 p.m. There are sign up lists to help donate poinsettias, your time, your voices for caroling, uh, all kinds of stuff you can help us with for the living nativity and the last posada. So look around down while you're there. And if this is the first time you've been here or one of the few times you've been here, there's also a guest book. We wouldn't mind if you sign that too. Put your name in there. We also would be pleased if you come back and worship with us again. Anybody got anything else? Have a very blessed Thanksgiving. Have a thankful day and a thankful rest of the week. Mm -hmm.